Tropical Green Roof and Living Wall Research Center, part of the Tropical Landscape and Human Interaction Lab with Dr. Kaufman. We have five sheds here and four of them have a green roof and some living walls. So this is what we call Shed 1. It has all of our data collecting uh, information inside and it has our weather tower here, collects the uh, wind speed, the uh, rainfall, which is that bucket with the golden top, a ambient temperature, which is in this kind of uh, layered um, cylinder shape. We also have a infrared um, temperature sensor that points on the canopy, determine the temperature of the leaves themselves, as well as a uh, solar irradiance, which is the amount of power um, of sunlight that uh, impedes upon our surface. So that all goes into our shed here uh, with this PVC pipe, everything runs inside. Um, and we connected it with some material from uh, the living walls. So that's the weather station and it has some uh, cable supports um, to keep it functioning and stable during hurricane season. So this is our wall. What we're doing right now is we've put media, we've placed the media and we're evaluating the, the weed growth. So everything here has been undisturbed since January. Um, we have our irrigation that's attached, but it's not working. What happens is we have these rails. So this is one of two systems that we have here. This system is the tray system. So each of these individual units is a tray and it comes out. And then inside is a black section, which can be removed as well. You lift it up, um, it's saturated and heavy on the one hand. So, um, these things can slide out, but to prevent, uh, potential, passerbys from purloining such plastic uh, prizes, we put these screws here. So you'd have to unscrew these and then pull them out, but we have this weather station, so it's kind of hard. Um, so what happens with this device is that you have these trays, they slide in, and then you have to attach irrigation um, to the side. So we have two types of rails. We have these horizontal rails. Inside of them is our water coming from our irrigation and it feeds into these little um, plastic uh, pipes. They're uh, feeding into these drip lines. So what happens is water runs through them and it comes out here and it drips down to the base. So you would place this down at the, the base of the plant where the roots are. So there's two of them. So we, we think that this would be a good system for those who want to grow produce, uh, lettuce, tomatoes, um, carrots, I suppose. And we're going to test out different uh, vegetables to grow. Manoa lettuce is very popular and and we think that there would be a, a good choice for this site. So that's the system. And it has uh, different sized nozzles depending on the amount of pressure that's coming from each one. So if you notice on the top here, we have a different type of emitter. So this emits uh, an equal amount of water as the emitters at the bottom, which is a different type. So this is to compensate for the differential pressure that's being uh, uh, received by the bottom rail versus the top rail. So you change the emitter type to account for that so that the water, the volume of water coming out of the system is the same. So this is a greater um, diameter uh, so that there'd be the least amount of, of, of water in this top row here. And so that, that's what this kind of system is set up as. So we have our irrigation that comes from these blue lines. So all the blue lines you see along the ground, those are water lines. Uh, we spray painted them blue to uh, help preserve the PVC from UV radiation. Now, all of these uh, grayish lines, this is electricity or data collecting line. So these lines here are the electricity from the solar panel. So there's a company that will be mentioned in uh, post-production that donated this solar panel and it feeds the entire site. So all the electricity that the site uses for data collection and transmission is derived from the sun and stored into shed one inside a battery. So inside shed one is all of our uh, expensive equipment. So that will be uh, closed right now. 
Well, actually it would be an injustice for me not to show you uh, the wiring. So the way that this works is we have all of our um, sensors and cameras coming in from the bottom and going across into our data collection box. All these wires go into a, a data logger, which is connected to the Wi-Fi, which is connected to um, Dr. Kaufman's lab. And then we have a camera, uh, I guess, uh, what do you call this? Television? Yeah, yeah, it's a television. We have a monitor for the cameras. So that's something I should be able to articulate. That's pretty simple. But anyway, uh, some of our materials here for the solar power are here. And then a charging station for our power tools. But yeah, that's uh, Shed 1. We have a camera, if you see it up there. Yeah, that, that's a camera. We have cameras on each of the sheds and then on various locations in the site to watch the, the plant growth and to ensure that no one damages the, um, the experimental station. So this is one of our infrared temperature sensors. What it does is it shoots out infrared um, and can determine the uh, temperature of a specific surface. So this is supposed to determine the temperature of our weed mat and the uh, that, that specific detail is useful uh, when comparing it to the uh, canopy surface as well as a control shed which has no plants. So this is what that is and you can see that we have a bunch of different sensors hooked up through here. So shed one has the most sensors um, going into it and data lines. It took, a, it took a while to do all this. It was a uh, kind of laborious and uh, unpleasant, but uh, that's what you got to do to to get nice data. So um, we have these vents on the side to cool off the battery. They take in air and they emit um, the warm air. Um, this is to protect from birds and geckos and things. So on the roof, we do have these irrigation systems. These are emitters that kind of mist the surface. Um, they only turn on for about a minute every day, but we're not turning them on currently because we're just using uh, the time we have to investigate the weed growth. So on each of the roofs, we have let the media grow whatever it has in it um, to evaluate the difference between monolithic and tray system weed development. Okay, so this is one of our sheds. This is shed one. This one is a tray system uh, and we have some weed growth on top. This is our gutter. Uh, the gutter feeds into a flow meter. This device uh, is, is like a motor, basically. So with the motor, if you turn the, the motor, it'll create electric current, which is then perceived by um, our data collector. So we can determine the amount of water that's run through the system. Um, and then the excess water is stored in these barrels for later use, if, if necessary. Right now, we're just trying to um, discharge them because we're not using it. Okay, and so we have uh, shed two. This is shed three, and you can actually tell that there's a pretty significant change in the overall size of the weeds that have grown. So the media we collected was uh, homogeneous and mixed evenly. That's uh, from our experience of being there. So shed three and four are monolithic, so they don't have trays and then shed uh, one and two. These two are tray systems, and from our, our data so far, it looks like the trays have less weeds. But uh, these monolithic systems seem to permit greater root growth, which seems to be correlated with an abundance of larger plants, a greater biomass. Uh, that's what we're looking at right now. So um, each of these sheds here is shed three. It has the same system and setup. Um, but it doesn't have any green walls on it. But then our uh, the other type of green wall we have is here. We haven't set it up yet because it has a different type of, of uh, container. But this is the setup for the modular um, green wall. It didn't come with any irrigation, so we had to measure everything, determine that on our own. Uh, each of these spigots, or emitters rather, so this would feed into a, a line that goes into the module, and I'll pull it out in a second. Uh, this is the perfect size to fit between the different 
uh, brackets here. So uh, it was kind of serendipitous that this worked out because this company didn't provide any instruction and it was up to us to figure out uh, how to install that emitter. But so these are our vertical rails and it has uh, opportunities for hooks. The hooks uh, are on the modules and I'll pull one out right now. So um, while I'm getting this out, I want to show you the inside of the sheds. I mean, each of the sheds is pretty different because right now they're used for storage, except shed one has the data collection stuff. But um, we do have an internal temperature sensor, which is this uh, probe here. It's a, I think it's a thermistor. So depending on the differential amount of current flowing between two different types of metal, that can then um, correlate to a temperature. So that's one of the things that we have is the internal temperature of each of the sheds. Uh, I'll show you some of our current data collection in a second, but um, these are our modules that attach to the, uh, I'll just wonder if you're, to the wall. And they contain a set of two propri um, pr proprietary, yeah, proprietary media blocks. Uh, basically there's a felt bag and then inside the felt bag, bag there's two rectangular um, kind of like spongy media blocks. It, it's like a peat moss mixed with a rubber. I would take it apart, but this company has designed these systems so that once you snap these uh, lids in place, you can't remove them very easily, um, which makes this even less desirable. So anyway, the way that this works is you screw on these brackets here onto all the corners and then it slides on. I'll try and do it in the middle here. Um, so. And it sits like that. So you'll have a bunch of these growing or on this wall. You'll have the plants growing on them and you have to insert the emitters in the top so that they go into the roots. The thing about these is that you have to grow the plants prior to hanging it on the wall. So the idea is you lay them all out in a field like this and you uh, cut or uh, manipulate this material such that you can then grow your plants. So let's say I want to grow a loa'e fern. So I'm going to put, you know, uh, 16, which would be a lot, but let's just say I'm going to do that. Then I would cut the, the slits and plant them in here and then water them in. And this, this media gets quite saturated. So then you let them grow like that and establish and then one week later you increase the incline by like 15 degrees and then you do it again and you do it again uh, for about four to five months until you have achieved vertical once you've hit vertical then you then you hang it on the wall um, so that's a lot of um, setup for this system I, I think it would look quite nice because it fulfills or it fills in the whole wall quite well but we will see Oh, this is the lid. So these are just plastic. They actually feel pretty cheap, but once you get them on the wall, I anticipate it being covered and you wouldn't see it and it would look quite nice. So we have the, the modular and the monolithic system. I'm sorry, for the, the roof, we have the tray system and we have the monolithic. This is our tray without any media. This is also just a plastic tray. And the way that these work is that they have an area to hold the water on the bottom so that they can maintain some moisture for the roots. We have this uh, filter fabric and this kind of uh, media, um, media buffer so it doesn't go into our bottom layer where the water is supposed to be stored. We also have an opportunity for water to run through the roof as well so that it doesn't just get stuck. So what you do is you, you plant these out and then uh, you can throw them on the roof. That's one of the things that we're testing. So one thing I noticed that uh, some people have asked about is we have this kind of discoloration. This is just from runoff of the media. So we, this was all clear, but as it rained, we had a, a great influx of, of media, uh, fresh media pouring down and it stained some of our stuff for now but we, we can clean that off uh, we do have the tray systems on freestanding walls too so this is another uh, effort to try and simulate different angles of growth 
uh, relative to the sun. So we have this one here and this one here. They're both freestanding, and we had some students from Shamnad University come and help us construct these, and we poured concrete and uh, raised them up. So these also have the these tray systems with the emitters, and uh, all this is very similar. The big difference is the angle. So if we look at them, the angle between the two is, is, uh, is pretty different. And so this is to try and show um, potential stakeholders that, hey, you know, your house, you can't change the angle, but we're going to show you how plants might grow differently depending on the amount of sun they get. So in our Manoa Valley site, north is about that direction straight ahead. And then this would be like our west facing or southwest facing area. So you would get different sun. So this one gets afternoon sun and, and this one ends up getting um, at, at late afternoon as well. So these two different systems also have our irrigation in the same way. And then uh, all the blue dots indicate where irrigation lines are run. Uh, we dug those up ourselves. And Dr. Kaufman taught me how to pipe. Uh, it's a nice skill. I, I enjoy that. So if we look at this shed here, shed, what is it? Three. Shed three has a pretty significant growth. And um, actually on Friday, which is, you know, the day that you're watching this, we're going to be collecting data and removing all the plant material. So uh, the final thing is our control shed. So this is just a shed that doesn't have any plants on it. And so we also have an infrared temperature sensor to determine the temperature on the roof. The comparison between what we have on these uh, planted roofs and the control is pretty different. So I'll pull up an app here in a second. Let me see if I can get it and show you how we collect data. We have some grass growing off of the roof here. All right, so this is the app interface with the logger net. It's a Campbell Scientific app. And then you uh, name all of your sensors. Uh, we named them all according to kind of what our code was. So S2 would be like shed two and S1 is shed one and all the different sensors associated with it. Um, it has some additional information about the memory uh, on the data logger. And then you can actually graph things within the app to try and look at it. So um, what you're seeing right now is I pulled up all the sensors and then you select which ones you want to use um, on your graph. So I'm gonna do an example here where it's the internal temperatures of sheds one through five over two weeks. So the pink is shed five, which is a control and that has a pretty drastic variation. So uh, right now I'm the only one here and so good practice is not to get on the ladder when you're by yourself. So I'm sitting on this table, but you can kind of see that that's the uh, monolithic and over here is our modular tray system. You can kind of see the difference between the two um, in terms of overall vegetative cover just left without any uh, planting. So you can see our solar panels and our freestanding walls here. We put shingles here to try and replicate how a roof might be if you had shingles on it because this was just bare. It was also to protect the top from water damage. Uh, we do uh, also have another ways, other ways of protecting from water damage. We put down this um, material. I think this is some kind of Tyvek, um, UV resistant material to protect the shed. So that's an important layer is a waterproofing membrane. And we do have specific sensors that go into all of the, the soil. And I'm not gonna pull the other ones out, but we have this one here. Uh, the way that these work is that they can determine the soil moisture content, the temperature and the electrical uh, conductivity of the media. So you, um, I was gonna say impregnate, it's not the right word. Bury this in the media, inside of the media. And so it's fully exposed to the soil surfaces for the two prongs. And each of the sheds has these for each of the walls and roofs. So this one we just have there, but they're quite durable and this is all like a pretty high, high quality material. Um, some final comments, we, we have these supports here because during hurricane season, the sheds could potentially tip a little bit. Uh, but now they have the roof on top, they might be a little more stable. Um, that's about it, I think. I wanted to say thank you for listening. And I've worked on this project for about a uh, year and a half, almost two years with Dr. Kaufman. And I've appreciated his guidance and advice and all the counseling he's provided me. So 
Uh, yeah, this is a great project and lots of fun things are going on here. I've learned a lot. If you have any questions, you can ask me after this video. Presumably, you're watching this during uh, opportunity where I'm also there. Anyway, okay, thank you.